Praise the Lord. Uh, welcome to this program. Uh, if you are tuning in uh, into these programs, we are on number 77. Uh, that means that uh, you have 76 programs that you have not seen. And so you are likely to be able to ask a few questions. But I want to guide you. But before we go into that, I want us to pray together. Let us pray. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to share your word. I thank you for your word. I thank you for the viewers that have come on. I pray, O oh God, that you shall minister to us by your Holy Spirit. And let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. So to help you to be able to flow with, with this particular program, I, I want to mention of where we are coming from. And uh, the main thing that we are sharing in the last few series uh, or programs uh, is offense. And offense is injurious. Offense, uh, you know how to deal with it, forgive, and that deals with the offense. And if there is a delay in forgiving people what they have done to you, then a secondary item will come. That means because offense is injurious, when the offense lands on you, because it is injurious, then it means it hurts you. So if you take too long to forgive, the, the, the injury will continue in your life. You have been injured, you are wounded, you may as well be a disabled person. And once you get disabled, everything around you, everything around your life is chaotic. Disappoint, disappointment, rejection, and all that. So we are now trying to focus on children uh, for this particular uh, uh, program. And we have said different aspects that hurt children. And the one at the top of the list is parents fight. Dad beat mom. That one is the one that is most uh, critical for children. Every child that has seen dad beat mom is not innocent. And you are, you are a child. I don't care. You are 30, 40, 100, 50 years, 70 years, and you are facing challenges. You have faced challenges, and maybe your children are giving you a lot of trouble. Uh, they are failing. They are failing in marriage. They are failing in business, failing in a job, failing in other relationships. That could be the problem, that there were things that happened to them as children, little babies of three, four, five years, and that thing because it's injurious, the offense, then they were damaged. And even if you are 40 or 50 or 60, it does not matter. So long as the injury has never been dealt with, then it must be working. And then forgiving has to do with the offense itself. But we are saying the offense has produced a secondary item, a wound. So that's what we are focusing, uh, for focusing on. When did you heal and how did you heal? Offense, we know you forgive because you are a Christian. I believe you are a Christian. And if you are not a Christian, this is an opportunity for you to hear what we are saying. And I don't think you are going to resist my God, Christ. Give your life to the Lord and you discover the Holy Spirit. We have already dealt with the issue of the Holy Spirit. will give you the understanding, will give you the revelation. And all of us, whether saved or not saved, we face challenges, and we need to know how we are dealing with the challenges. But now I want to focus on what we have for this program. And what we have for this program is that unfaithfulness. So if the father is not faithful uh, to his wife, or the wife is not faithful, or they are fighting, or they, have, uh, they make a lot of noise in the family, or they do abominable things, they are drunkards, they sleep out drunk, all those things hurt children. And I want us to, to look at the, the family, the marriage institution, because that marriage institution, as God said, man and woman, they shall be one flesh. So, so we want to focus on that so that we can see why God is, uh, is not happy so we want to, ad to address that. Let's turn to Malachi. Malachi chapter 2 verse 15. Uh, it says, But did he not make them one, having a remnant of the Spirit? And why one? He seeks godly offspring. These children are godly 
offsprings. Therefore, take heed to your spirit and let none deal treacherously with the wife of his youth. So here we are looking, we are seeing that God intended a man and woman, husband and wife, to be one flesh. For what reason? So that God can have a godly offspring. God always looks to man, uh, that the man should be, uh, look like him. Because he created man in his image according to his likeness. So God is looking for that from man all the time, from a family. And he created man and woman. We may not fully understand everything about God. But we can, whatever we pick, whatever we get to understand, we embrace it so that we can make the adjustments that are necessary so that uh, our children, our families, even God, may be pleased. Uh, also, if we continue with Malachi chapter 2, verse 16, it says, For the Lord God of Israel says that he hates divorce. God hates divorce. For it covers one's garment with violence. Divorce covers an individual's garment with violence. That's what the word is saying. Says the Lord of hosts. Therefore, take heed to your spirit that you do not deal treacherously with your, with your spouse. And also, if we look at uh, Ephesians chapter 6, and we want to deal with the scripture so that we can bang on, uh, on the issue, uh, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4, the word says, you, uh, And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. So, so uh, parents and our fathers, do not provoke your children to anger. Do not do things that will make the children feel hurt, feel angry, and uh, feel like uh, this is not the right place for us. I was saying in another program that uh, uh, the girl child is most hurt when the family is not working right and there are issues between dad and mom because the person with authority, the person who is higher in power and authority is the one that hurts other people more. Yes, you can be hurt by your children, but the father and the mother are the ones that hurt children because children are very, very helpless. If you think of a baby, a baby uh, is 100% dependent on somebody. And that, that is the main problem. Therefore, the baby or the child, for that matter, is looking for security, is looking for somebody or people that love that child so much they are able to protect that child, provide for the child, and they are not going to neglect that child. And because of that, if the, the, the parents are not living right, they have issues, there is a, a divorce, there is separation, then the children are provoked to anger. The children are hurt. So children become the main the, the victims of the violence in marriage. They are the ones who suffer most. But we, we, we want to say that uh, it's not just violence. The behavior of parents in terms of, uh, of, of, of decency, even dressing of a mother can cause children to be hurt. When a mother is dressed in a manner that uh, one may think or uh, feel like she's loose, she's a loose woman. So children will surely be hurt. So we want to, 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 to trust the Lord that when we get these issues right and we see our children, uh, they are becoming rebellious, they, they are becoming failures in life, you may not have done anything direct to a child, but they look to you as a role model. They follow you and try and copy you. They imitate you. Even the word of God says concerning our Father in heaven, imitate God as dear children. Ephesians 5, verse 1, imitate God as dear children. So that imitation thing has a lot to do with who the person becomes. We have cases that uh, are like testimonies. In one case, there was a girl who, 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 whose, uh, <clears throat> whose mother and father divorced. And then eventually, uh, the children were left with the mother. And uh, along the way, because this mother was already uh, devastated by the factors uh, around uh, divorce. Uh, she would uh, bring men and go with them in the house, uh, 
uh, without caring about the children. And these children are not babies. They, they are teenagers. And the mother does not care what they feel, what they think. So she would come and go in with a man in the same house where the children are. And eventually that, that lady, uh, when she grew up, she was not able to take care of herself, to stand upright, to do things that are decent. She also became so hurt, so wounded. She was so angry with the mother. She hated the mother with a passion. And she would go looking for her dad. And dad was in the same category. He, too, was very loose in terms of morals. So this girl eventually found herself being immoral. And she never got married. Because wounded people don't have the ability to go straight, walk straight, until they get into a proper marriage. And then they are able to sustain their marriage and raise the children effectively because they are wounded. Because the offense, uh, as, as we have seen, has done damage. The offense has done damage to them. And that damage nobody has, uh, has ever addressed. So we shall later in the programs, we shall be seeing how to address the, 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 the wounds that uh, were inflicted in the lives of people. Because many people have healed. Many people have been delivered. I know we always address the offense in the way of, forgi of forgiveness. And uh, you may have forgiven people, uh, everybody that has offended you, but you are still having issues of concern in your life. You are still struggling. Finances are an issue. A relationship, in a violence around your life, I mean, marriage, and uh, in, even in, 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 in the place of job or business, you suffer rejection. So there are many, many issues of concern. After forgiving everybody that, uh, that uh, sinned against you, I want to tell you that what is manifesting at that stage is it's not necessarily offense. It is the secondary item. And if you follow these program, pro programs, you are going to get to the root of the issue, to get to understand what really is manifesting. What is manifesting is the fact that you are wounded and because you are seriously wounded, badly wounded by too many people in your life, beginning with what you never saw. You saw family, a family that, uh, where you grew up, a family that was not stable, there were too many issues. So you did not know that that changed you. You did not know that that twisted you. Because a child is, is so, so, so soft, forming inside and outside. So when the, the environment is hostile, that hostility hits the child and the child curves so that you did not grow straight, you grew curved. So you became an, a, a, a disabled person. You became, they call it kilema. So, so that you are, you, are, you are not straight, your life is not straight. Not, not the, 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 the body, but the inner man. Because we have the man of the spirit. The man of the spirit is twisted. So that is what could be manifesting in your life. So, so I want you to examine yourself. Again, I'm saying we are not dealing with the children here, not necessarily. We are dealing with the people that are hurt. And you can as well be one of them, and uh, it, you may have been hurt at any stage. But we, I wanted to bring up the issue that parents, when they behave uh, in a manner that uh, children are not... Uh, respecting or they are, uh, uh, respecting them because of their behavior, because their morals are not perfect. They are not good morals before the eyes of the children. And remember, the children are known by their, their, their fathers. They are known by their parents. In those early days, every place we went and registered ourselves and gave our names in 50s, in 60s, uh, in school, you would quote your name and then say, son of. Without that son of, then they would not be satisfied with you. They would still insist that you, 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 you say you are son of who? Son of who? That is very, very important because we are known by our parents. And so if our parents are notorious, if our parents are drunkards, if our parents are, are murderers, they, they are people who break into people's home, and then you are, say, you are called John, John, John uh, Otiende, uh, and then the son of somebody who is a murderer, someone who breaks people's homes, 
that one now labels you accordingly, that you are the same as your father. So we want to be like our father in heaven. And this is why these scriptures are coming forth. It's like God also is interested in this unit, in this family. He's interested to see that husbands and wives are one so that they can bring forth offspring that uh, are, are, are godly. So, so, so you can see as parents we have responsibility. And if you are there, you are a young person, it's, it's even better when you are hearing what I'm saying. Why? Because if it happened that you grew up in that environment and don't always go complaining to your parents and telling them you did and you did. No, 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 no. We are not in that direction. We are there to diagnose ourselves and if you see what is the issue on your side, seek help. That's why we are here. And along the way, you are going to find that many people will change, many people will, will be transformed. And that's what we need because we are expecting revival. We are expecting God to pour his spirit in a mighty way, in a very special way. So we need also to be co-workers with him. We need to, to ad make adjustments in our lives, especially those that are saved, so that we can facilitate the move of God, the move of the Holy Spirit. Disabled people, wounded people, people in pain, they, they don't do very much. Even in ministry, they will not manage. They, they, they will not convince anybody because within a short time they are complaining. They are talking about their God, what God has done, and within a few minutes they are complaining about what God has not done. You cancel everything, every testimony you give. We want to give testimonies that are long-lasting. And to do that, we ourselves must be changed. We must be healed. Because wounded people, hurt people are professional accusers. And you know, as well as I, 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 I do, the accuser of brethren is called Satan. And Jesus said, there, there is a, a wide gate, broad, broad road, leading to destruction. And then he said, strive to enter through the narrow gate that leads to life. Where do you think, on which road do you think the accuser of brethren is? I know you are thinking like me. He must be on this road, wide road, and too many people are in it, which leads to destruction. Because the wages of, of, of sin is death. So he's following that road. If that be the case, that particular moment, when you are frustrated, you are angry, you are, you are speaking evil of other people, you are accusing people, for that particular moment, on which road do you think you are? I know that bothers you. Because if you are honest, you say you are on the wide, uh, broad road. Then the next question is, with who? And that one, I don't want you to answer me. Answer yourself. We say this guy called Satan, the accuser of brethren, is on the broad road. We agreed on that. He can't be in the narrow gate leading to life, a uh, narrow road leading to life. He must be on the broad road leading to, 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 to death. And then we are saying, if you become like him, and the word says, be imitators of God as dear children. But now it appears like you have imitated the other guy, Satan himself. So God himself will fold his hands because you decided that you really don't want him, you don't want to uh, be on his side. So I want to change you, I want you to be changed. There's also another testimony of a, a young girl who was expelled from school, she was informed to, she was expelled from school because of indiscipline. And she's, uh, the mother is running, looking for how she can be helped, uh, cancelled, she can be cancelled, and uh, she was brought to me. Then I told the, the mother, can you go out, let me talk to her, and find out why is it that others are seeing her as indisciplined. So when I sat with her, and I helped her to search where she's hurt, where she's wounded, she said that uh, my mother is, is alcoholic. She drinks so much, and she sleeps outside, and she's married. The, the father or the, 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 the husband is sleeping in the house, the wife is drinking out there with other men, and she's smoking as well. She sleeps outside. 
So that is what touched this, this girl, hurt her, wounded her, so she was not able to walk straight even in school. She was so indisciplined. So when you see children rebel or rebellious, don't always think that they are the ones who are doing things or they, they, they have decided to be rebellious. Not necessarily. They too would want to have good lives. But what they are seeing around is not the best. It's not good. And they have no other parents. They have no other mother. They have no other, other father. It, they just have you as parents. So when they don't see you as a good example to them, and then maybe other children in school, they could be talking, if they are aware, if there are some that are aware that the, the parents are not working right and they have very awkward behaviors, then these children, they will be talking about your, uh, your parents. If you are a young person, they will be talking about your parents. And that one, children cannot cope with. They get so hurt. And the children may not know, they may not even know that they are rebellious because offense is a snare. It is hidden. Even if the offense was there, you will not be able to connect it with what is manifesting in your life. So trust the Lord that there will be a change in your life. Trust the Lord that as you follow this program, you shall not remain the same. There is also another case where this girl uh, was uh, mishandled by the environment, let's say. Uh, the father, uh, being who he was, a uh, foster uh, and, and lay with her and, uh, when she was in standard one and then in standard eight. And that became total chaos. And, and, and you can understand. For a father who can ho get hold of the daughter in standard one and even in standard eight, can you imagine? He, he's not okay. Maybe uh, because you have missed other program, uh, programs, I said that uh, a wounded person is injurious. Most likely, this father also needed help. And we are in trouble in families. Because the father needs help, the mother needs help, the children need help, the grandchildren need help. So we must change. <coughs> we must change. We must trust God for a healing. For a father who can lay his hands on the daughter a small girl of standard one, that person needs a lot of help. It is never a decision that uh, one makes, a decision, a very clear decision. No, it is a forced thing. There is occupation in the person. There is the one who comes to steal, destroy, and kill. He's the one that is behind all this, and the words of God says, resist him. Resist them, him. If we do not understand that, <clears throat> that he who comes to steal, to, uh, to, 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 steal, to, to kill, to, de to destroy, if we don't know that he's behind all this, then we shall be losers. We shall lose out because we are fighting battles that are not uh, real. So I, I want to trust the Lord for you, who is a father, who is a mother. I trust the Lord for you that you will think of what we have just said. Your behavior around the, around the children, your discipline, your immoral behavior, or your moral, your moral behavior, if it's not appropriate to, so that the children can copy from you, then that behavior will destroy the children. They will, they will be offended, and the offense is injurious. They will be wounded. They will be disabled. And then you are seeing them wounding their own children with their behavior, and so on and so on. I want to pray with you. You who is the father, who is the mother, I want to pray with you who happen to be a child, whether you are 50 or 60 or 70, you used to be a child and you are in this program, what we are talking about, there is, there is, there is help. Many have healed, even the cases we are talking about here, they healed. Because we don't have a lot of time to go into details of the, of the testimonies that they have given, but believe me, they have healed. And I have sat with, with, with so many of them and they have healed. So let me pray with you that God will help you in this uh, area, irrespective of who you are, whether you're a parent or you are a child, and it, it has happened to you. Father, I thank you for speaking to us, for the viewer who, never, who has never heard a thing like this, and they, they have now heard. Lord, I pray that you touch them and help them to respond, to respond to what you are saying. 
Lord, I pray that your hand be upon them, that every person that may be touched by what I have said, they will seek help quickly so that they may, they may heal. And now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen.